Good morning, everyone. Am I audible? Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, inform all to join, okay? As soon as possible, so that we can start. So let's wait for some time, okay? Inform all to join. Okay, uh, so we'll start, fine. So in the last class we have started or we have discussed about points and turnout, right? And I already mentioned you that the point and crossing, it's considered as a very critical and you can say crucial and a very important part of railway track. Okay. And basically, this point and crossing altogether, which is known as a turnout, and it's basically facilitate a particular rail to change its direction. And we have also have discussed some component of a railway track, especially uh, about point and crossing. Fine. So, yeah, so let me share my screen for some time. So, is it visible to you? I think it is visible, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. So, um, So we'll just start from the beginning again for just for our view okay so basically why we need a point and crossing so the importance of points and crossing in railway track are that diversion of train from one track to another is controlled automatically by wheel flank unlike steering the wheel on roadway vehicles so even in the uh, previous class, someone asked me why a particular uh, uh, a person which seated in a locomotive engine can change the route or not. But here is the answer. The diversion of train from one track to another is controlled automatically by wheel flanks, basically. Okay? Because there is no steering inside a locomotive. Just like, a, unlike that cars and and all 
moving on a particular railroad okay so point and crossings are special arrangement for this division diversion that provide flexibility of movement by connecting one line to another and it helps to impose restriction over turnouts to retard movement okay so these are some important points necessary uh, for point and crossing so basically i already told you in the last class that turnout basically it's a combination of point and crossing okay in other word the combination of point and crossing all together is known as a turnout okay and it's animal a track either a branch line or a siding to take off from another track basically it provide a facility for safe movement of train in either direction on both tracks so there are some part of turnout okay uh, like a pair of point switches basically so we'll discuss about that first of all just read it out about the different component of point and crossing or turnout so we need a pair of point or you can say switches what abcd is basically is coming from the diagram okay i think this diagram is i'll show you anyway so you need a okay like i will show you a pair of point and crossing or switches like a b c d maybe somewhere here here you can see here we can say there is a uh, switches are there okay this is the point part this is a crossing fine a pair of stock rail regarding stock rail i already mentioned you stock rail or permanent rail they are the fixed rail okay here you can see how many stock cells are there you can see <coughs> so basically what stock rail i already mentioned in the last class that they are running rails immediately alongside of a switch rail i can switch the switch rail lay basically okay so they are the stock rail basically or lead rail okay this one and this one okay this one the inner straight lead rail this is the outer straight lead rail and this is the curve okay this is the outer curve lead rail and this is the inner curve lead rail okay since this is a curve taking in the direction so it will be considered as a uh, inner rail okay <clears throat> then uh, V crossing V crossing basically here it is part okay that means this one G H I J this part actually this is a V crossing okay then two check rails four lead rails like that i already told you that this one uh lead rails this one lead rails this is the stock rail basically okay a b this is a stock rail this is a stock rail and here is a lead rail we actually lead the train in different direction okay and what i mentioned two check rail okay here you can see one check rail this another check rail okay then four lead rails i already mentioned here is one two three okay and four two four straight direction two four uh curve direction then two wing rails wing ra wing rails are basically it's a part of a crossing you can see this is a nose okay and these are the wing rail this black part this one and this one this is the wing rail okay this one the wing rail this one the wing rail and basically this is the nose and this is the nose angle basically this alpha is given the this is a nose angle okay and different things are there lots of things are there so i'll show you only the important parts like switch tie then uh crossing tie plate you cannot see like this let me see whether it is possible or not i think uh, somewhere here it will be there okay it's not visual right now i'll show you okay. 
wait then 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 bearing plates uh, slide shear stretcher bar these are very important so bearing plate will be there okay and stretcher bar this one you can see stretcher bar stretcher bar is uh, this bar is is attached in transverse direction across the rail okay it's basically to connect this stock rail or the point rail basically okay this you can see pointed one rail is there no this point rail or tongue rail basically it is also known as tongue rail this is a tongue rail and to connect the tongue rail together a stretcher bar is used to connect both okay okay then uh, roads cranks lever okay we'll do discuss about that yeah basically these are the uh, the component of a turnout okay so here you can see this is a very uh, rough diagram of a uh, turnout or you can say point and crossing this part represents the point this is the point part and this is your crossing part okay So this is the straight direction. This is the what direction? It will be your left turn, right? If if I if I consider this is your direction of the movement, okay, you can see the facing direction. That means suppose training train is moving in this direction, so it will take suppose this is a straight path and it will be your left turn, okay? So it will be a left turn, uh, turnout, okay? So depending on the direction also we have different type of turnout, okay? I'll show you. So facing direction so one standing at the two of the switch and look towards the crossing it will be your facing direction basically so if you stand here and just look in this direction stand here means nearby the switches because switches are basically located nearby the point okay so switches are basically used to uh, used to fit nearby the point and if you stand here and the direction if you are seeing in this direction it will be your facing direction okay trailing direction means what one standing at crossing and look towards the switches so if you look in opposite direction it will be a trailing direction okay so in some numerical in some problem if you are if i some statements are written here like facing direction or trailing direction you have to understand facing direction means particular uh, it's telling about the location nearby the point trailing direction basically represents the crossing part okay okay this time things are also okay fine then trailing point or not okay these things are okay okay so we have depending on the direction we have a left hand or right hand switches okay so depending on the left hand or right hand uh when seen from facing direction switches are termed as a left hand or right hand that means if you are standing in the uh i'll show in the diagram suppose you are <coughs> suppose your switches are switch may uh, that switch box is suppose in this direction okay i'm showing here suppose your switch box is suppose here and if you're uh, if, you're, if you're standing right here okay if you're standing right here and seeing in this direction then you can say your switch box is in your right direction okay and if you're standing here then you can say your switch works in your left direction it's a basic logical thing okay so from that that, that point of view we can say uh, right hand or left hand switch basically so depending on left or right when seen from facing direction that means from which direction you are seeing it's depend on that basically even <clears throat> based on direction we have a different type of turnout like left hand turnout and right, right hand turnout okay if you are considering this is a facing direction, that means there will be a switch. If you are, this is a facing direction, so here you can say right hand switch because your the switch, the motor, the operating motor, <coughs> is fixed here. Okay, I will tell you what is the purpose of the motor, the switch motor basically or switch box. For now, you just understand there there is a box. Okay, which is fixed in the right side. Okay, so it's a, it's called right hand switches. Okay, so. It, here you can see the left hand switches fine <clears throat> from trailing direction so suppose this is your facing direction that means this is a point there is a crossing okay and your 
direction can change in this right turn. So it will be your right hand turnout. The train from main track, which is this is a main track. Okay, the straight one is considered as a main track. So train from main track is diverted to the right of the main route in the facing direction. That means in the right direction. So it will be a right hand turnout, basic one. Okay. Other things are already given here. Suppose this is a point. Okay. Then uh, this is your stock rail. St uh, this one stock rail. This is your check rail. Okay. This is your crossing basically. It is, is a nose. Okay. Or you can say it is a frog. Basically, this is called frog portion of the cross section. This is a nose. This is a wing rail. Okay. All these things are part of a point and crossing. And this is a uh, left hand turnout. Now, for left hand turnout, you can see you are seeing in this direction. Your facing direction will be here. Okay. And your trailing direction will be in this direction. So, since you can see the train is moving in this left part, left direction, so it will be a left hand turnout basically. Okay. So, bas basically, this is about the left hand and right hand turnout. Okay. Now, so regarding uh, uh, the operation of the turnout or point and crossing, I'll show you one animation. From the animation, you will understand how a particular point and crossing facilitate a particular train to change its direction. Okay. Wait. Okay, first of all, uh, is it visible to you? Is it visible to you? Please do the respond. I'm showing a video right now. Is it visible to you? Yes, sir. Okay, so there will be no any audio. So I'll guide you to understand the video. Okay, so this is this particular video is all about how a particular train change track over a point and crossing okay so let's start so first of all for two three minutes for three minutes the video will be run you just go, uh, i'll not disturb you just go on uh, watching the video after that i will show you again in the video by stopping at some point okay there will be no video or uh, there will be no any audio it will be just a video okay the instruction will be there you may not be understand but still you just go through watching the video fine and just play the video around right now
Okay. Uh, am I audible to you? Can you hear me? Okay. So, have you understand something? Little bit? Anything? Anyone? Now, do you have any idea how a particular train can change uh, direction what is the importance of point what is the importance of crossing right okay very good then so again so if we if somebody have some doubt so i'll show you again the video at some point so that it will be clear to you okay so i'm just playing the video again so basically uh, yeah, so here you can see there is a, you can see if you taking, if the train is moving in this direction, okay, I'm showing you animation, suppose the train is moving in this direction, okay, I'll take the red color, suppose train is moving in this direction, okay, that means your switch, uh, the point will be in that direction, okay, and crossing, this is the crossing part, okay, and this will be your, what, a right turn or left turn? Anyone answer? It is a right hand turn out or left hand turn out? Right hand turn out or left turn? It is your what? No idea? If your, your point is in that direction, the crossing is in this direction, that means train is moving. This is your straight part. This is your right direction, right? Okay, correct. This is your right turn, turn out. Okay, fine. So let's play again. Okay. So basically, this is a straight track. So there is some infraction that is your basically, this is a main part that uh, technically we, uh, which is important. This is your will this is your axle okay other mechanism it's also it's needed but for now you just concentrate on the wheel and the axle part only okay and there is some bearing also here you can see the bearing this is a spring okay like this it is connected it is an assembly of four pair of uh, wheel here you can see the tread part have you noticed here this uh, flank part the inner flank part is in a larger diameter computer com compared to the outer diameter okay these things are already uh, explained in the last class because the flank part of the wheel is take have taken have uh, have very important role in turning the track here you can see this uh, inner flank is highlighted here with a yellow color yellow greenish color okay this is flank part, which is uh, extended beyond. Okay, and there is a also there is a gap between the rail surface and the wheel. Always remember, they are always there. 
specific amount of gap. I al also told you to find out the specific range of the gap. I hope you have gone through that. This is a flank. Okay. So flank, what is what? The preventing wheels from the sliding of the track and maintain position on the track basically. So you should not allow sliding over the track. Or always it maintain in a position. Fine. So, so basically that outer rail, outer rail is basically it is known as stock rail. Okay, that one. This one and this one basically it is uh, defined as a stock rail. Okay, regarding stock rail also we have already discussed, right? They are basically running rails immediately alongside of the switch rail. Okay, this is the stock rail, this is your closer rail. Okay, it's between the uh, crossing and the switch, it's a closer rail. So closer rail are the straight, may, may be straight or curved rail that are positioned in between heel of switch and two of frog. This is a two of frog and there will be a heel of switch because this is a frog and here is a switch. Okay. Okay. This is our point rail. Okay. So point rail, you can see the thickness. If, if you see, if you look closely, you can see that now here you see the width. Now see the width here. So from this point, it is tapered like this. It's like this, tapered. Okay. You can see up to this point, it's very thin now. There is no thickness. Okay. So if I show, if I give you a larger view of the uh, top view of the point rail, I'm just showing you, it may be like this. I'm just showing you the larger view. Okay. It's not like that for larger view. So it will be in a decreasing order of width. Okay. It decreasing towards the switch. You can, I think you can see also, na, the width of the rail is decreasing. Fine, this is actually point rail. And basically, this is your switch motor or switch box, and they are the rod. Okay, and this red color, this red color bar is basically your stretcher bar. This red color bar is your stretcher bar, and it is basically to connect in position, connect this point rail in position. Okay. Yeah. So this is your stretcher bar basically connecting with this to uh, point rail. Okay, this is a switch rod. This switch rod are connected with this point rail. Okay. This one is connected with this rail and this one is connected with this rail. Okay. And to move in the same rate, it is done by this stretcher bar. Okay. And here you can see the switch motor. Basically, switch motor what it does, it does allow to move the point rail in lateral direction. That means it may be in this direction or it may be in this direction with the help of uh, this this rod. Okay. Okay. Now this is your sliding chair. So basically, sliding chair is what is the purpose of sliding chair? So sliding chairs are provided here in a longer dimension, you can see, so that a particular this point rail can move over this, okay? They have to move over this uh, chair. So time to time, due to, to maintain frictionless, lubrication is done over the surface of the sliding chair. So why it's called sliding chair? Because this point rail slides over it, okay? So we have to make it frictionless so we have to go for lubricating by oiling or grease like that can be used to make it frictionless okay they are the sliding chair and I, this is the heel block basically i already told you now to maintain the uh, distance between these two rail okay that in distance between the stock rail and the closer rail the heel block is provided now this point basically crossing whole section is crossing basically this part is basically known as frog okay and the frog is combination of this is the nose part okay this is the nose part this is the nose angle this is the wing 
rail okay that's all this is called frog it's look like a frog right? that's why it's called actually frog okay yeah so nearby the frog or in opposite of the frog check rail is provided towards the stop rail okay basically to uh, maintain the direct uh, movement of the wheel along this direction okay this is a guardrail basically this is about joint or you can say the um, fish plate I, we have already mentioned here right with the bolt four bolt this clip fastener we already uh, mentioned about that now it is a e type uh, fastener uh, or you can say the e elastic fastener it also absorb the vibration okay it will not come out easily it's so tightly hold the rail with the sleeper so basically as a whole this whole part is known as crossing okay all this part component like check rail the frog that nose nose angle wing rail okay this part is all about crossing okay okay so basically how a particular train can uh, change it uh, direction okay okay now you can see <coughs> if this uh, point rail which can be moved in either direction left or right with the help of this switch motor okay and the, with the switch point you can say okay so if uh, at this position now you can see a position where this rail is is closer to this this rail okay and this uh, point rail is now some distance apart from this rail okay now there means if a particular rail will move over the the wheel flanks which going through this rail it will be come inside that means you can say that this point rail come inside or come between the rail and the wheel flank okay and that in that way the wheel all only follow the direction of this rail on this rail this point rail i'm talking about this point rail okay since it is closer to this rail and the flank the wheel flank will is come along with the point rail okay or you can say the right side point rail okay i think from the animation also it's easy to understand okay now you can see this rail is towards closer to this rail okay and apart from this rail let's see now we can see it. see closely okay now can you see here i already told you now there is a, always there is a gap between the inner flank of the wheel and the rail surface okay and that's why this point rail is make tapered tapered at the point location so that it go inside go inside or, or fill the gap between the wing uh, wheel flank and the rail okay like that it will be always follow the wheel always follow this direction okay now somehow if i move this uh, bar in that direction what will happen this gap will be closed and this gap will be increased that means this rail will be go inside this flank and then what will happen this will follow this direction so like that we can go for changing the track basically so i already told you in the last calls also the flank of the wheel have a very important role in changing the track okay so yeah, now see here you can see the wheels are independent or there is no contact between the point rail and the wheel flank but here you can see the point rail is go inside the wheel flank okay so as expected it will move in the straight direction only now see got it now it will be opposite now if uh, switches are moved in left direction it will take the right hand turn out okay 
ओके आई थिंक दिस इज सो पॉइंट रेल आर द मूवेबल रेल्स व्हिच गाइड द व्हील टुवर्ड आइदर द स्ट्रेट और डाइवर्जिंग ट्रैक ओके बेसिकली दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पोर्शन ओके सो पॉइंट इज अ पर्टिकुलर लोकेशन इन अ रेलवे ट्रैक व्हिच एक्चुअली अलाउ द ट्रेन टू टेक अ डायरेक्शन basically okay like that and it is done by the switch rod which is connected with the switch motor so basically switch or switch or railway switch if somebody asks you tell me about railway railway switch so railway switch or railway point basically it's a combination of three main part one is your switch motor switch rod okay and your point rail basically this thing this three thing okay This is stretcher bar. So rail blades, it is also known as rail blades also. So rail blades move back and forth on metal platform called slide chair, the sliding chair. Okay, it is move along over the sliding chair. Sliding chairs are periodically lubricated. Yeah, I have already told you, na. It's periodically lubricated to achieve a smooth movement. Fine. So this is a heel block. This is a joint. clip crossing is a pair of switch uh, that connect two parallel rail track along a train on a track to access over the over the other basically so crossing uh, crossing is a part uh, is a section where a particular train can cross over another track okay when a particular train is moving in a straight direction the basically the load impact is coming on this highlighted track that means this nose is always in contact with the load okay that means this part and is okay like that even the wing rail here and if a particular train is moving in the this direction it is considered is a right turn here you can see the the load coming on this particular highlighted rails okay so basically what is the purpose of guard rail the guard rail or check rail are placed parallel to regular running rail to keep the wheel of the rolling stock in alignment to prevent derailment basically so it is basically provided across the uh nose or across the frog in crossing because there is a chance of derailment so this is your crossing nose okay so this is your four track a so it will allow track b or you can say the right turn okay so it is kind of a summary of that particular video if you can, you can also look here okay now from this video from this picture you can see this is close to this in at that position you can see the rail wheel rail wheel move in this direction so it will be like that let's see it will go in turning right turn okay fine so here i just want to close this video so i think you have us uh, now we have understand about how a particular point and crossing work any doubt till now no yes, sir no right so if possible if possible go and go in, uh, try to go to that uh, railway crossing if you can do and check all the point by your own eye okay explain it i think you have seen this thing but from now you will see in a different way okay from a technical point of view we can identify different component of a railway track okay fine so with this i just want to first close my recording then i'll just take your attendance okay so i'll i'm closing my recording here